Hi guys and welcome back to Tampa Boy Turnings. I'm Steve. Uh, this week, um, as promised in the last video, I'm just going to do a very quick walk around of the lathes that I've had on my journey as a wood turner, right from the very beginning up to now with the new lathe. Now I'll run through each of the lathes, um, their features, their cost and uh, what they like to use. Um, but before I do start, I would just like to say that I am not endorsed in any way or have no connection with SIP, the company that make all of the lathes that I'm going to take you around, bar the homemade lathe. lathe. Um, I've stuck with SIP just because uh, that's the first lathe I went with. I was very happy with it and I continued through the, the range of lathes. Um, a lot of other people do it with other companies. They stick to one company and they're very happy with it. SIP just happens to be the uh, the lathes and tools that I'm I'm using. So I just wanted to get that clear that I have no connection with SIP at all. Um, with that said, I'm going to bring you over to the very first lathe that I start, started with, and it's a homemade lathe just made from a drill. So I'll bring you over and I'll just run you through it. Now it's not complete because I've since used bits of it and recycled the plywood that it was made from and stuff like that. But I've, I've got a basic layout of what it was like and it'll give you a, a general idea of what it was like when I started. Okay, so this was my first setup. Um, it's just an old um, 110 volt uh, Makita drill. And uh, I've just got up on a block of wood at the moment, but the basic setup that this would have been is it had a ply board runner. It was much longer than this. It had a ply board runner fixed to the bench um, with other ply pieces that this headstock that I had made up used to slide up and down. This was then fixed centre to the, the tailstock and uh, it was fixed down solid with straps and it was dead centre. It was very accurate actually. And um, and that was pretty much the layout of the lathe. And then to the side, I had a, a block of wood fixed again to the bench with a hole board in it and a homemade tool rest. Now the tool rest did break later on, so I haven't got that now, but it was um, just a steel tool rest that I had stuck into a hole and it used to just slide up and down as well along the table. And I used to just clamp it down in the place that I wanted to use it. I had a chuck key for this um, and I used to just attach things like this. Now these are very sketchy. I would not recommend that anybody does this. I did this just to learn um, the basics of wood turning. So um, if you do make these, it's at your own risk. I did all this at my own risk. But what I did was I got, um, I don't even know what this was. It's some kind of um, attachment for a tool or something. Uh, it had a bearing on the back here. I glued it all up and made it solid. It's got three holes in it, and that was my face plate for making pieces. And I used to put that into the chuck. I used to have that screwed to the piece, and that was my face plate for doing small bowls and things like that. Um, and then I had this really, really now it's very rusty because it's been just thrown in the in the cold shed at home, and it's it's got pretty rusty. But um, yeah, very sketchy. It's an old hole saw with slots cut into it and a pipe clip around it. And I used to use that as the chuck. I'd put it on the piece, have a tenon turned on it. And uh, I used to tighten that right down. And it used to hold really well. And it used to be quite true. Believe it or not, as rough as that looks, it was really, really, uh, it was really, really good for what it was. And it cost me nothing, it was just left over from when I used to be a plumbing and heating engineer. Um, and then the tools that I used were just normal chisels. Normal wood chisels that I uh, sharpened up 
and just kept touching them up and practicing and using as scrapers. I've got one there that I've turned down to a round nose scraper. And then when I needed a tool to get into a certain angle, I used to adapt it. This is a tire wrench or a tire iron as you call it in the States. And I just shape, sh shape the end up to a scraper and that used to do me for doing detail work. Uh, I haven't got a lot of the tools that I had now because like I say, they were really sketchy, they were thrown away, they were, they were very rough. Now the tail stop, the way, the way this was built, I took it apart just to show you. Uh, this is the head of a garden strimmer. Do you know the strimmers that you use for just whacking down the leaves and things like that? And it's got uh, a bearing built inside and it had a spline coming out of it that the, uh, the blades would connect onto. I just took all that assembly apart. The engine blew up on this strimmer and it wasn't worth repairing. I took the head off and fitted into the into this and I just ground down the spline to a point and that was my tail stop, my live tail stop. That obviously was bolted into there. And like I say, I used to just have two screws in there, I unscrew the screws, slide it up to my piece, screw it down tight, and that was my uh, that was my setup for turning. I turned some really nice pieces. I've got one bowl, one bowl here left. A lot of the stuff I gave away. I actually made this bowl. It's got a bit of uh, inclusion, live edge in it. I filled these cracks with uh, just coloured wax, just wax crayons. And uh, I made this bowl on this lathe. I'm gonna keep that just for just for keepsake. But uh, yeah, that was the first bowl I made on this drill lathe, and that's pretty much the setup I started with. I was talking to my buddy Rob from Woodsley Summercraft, backwards and forwards in Canada, asking him different questions because he had a lathe at the time. I think he was using his father's lathe. Um, and I was asking questions about heights and things like that and I, I built this on just measurements and things that he gave me and that I got off the internet. And then I started watching videos on YouTube, uh, Mike Walt, Walt, Carl Jacobson, Sam Angelo, Al Furtado, all those guys, Stephen Ogle, I could go on and on and on, you, you know them all. Uh, I'll put links to a lot of them down below. But um, that's how I started and I learned tool techniques with what I had. That's all I could afford, a very big family, and that's what I built, and that's what I learned from. So you can turn something from uh, a very minimal piece of kit made by yourself. Do you know, it is possible. But you do have to have common sense when you're doing stuff like this. You can't, you can't put this together and be putting your hands near stuff and you know, you, you have to have everything fixed solid and just make sure you know your limits with it. But I did learn some really good uh, control skills with the tools. Um, and it got me started and it gave me the bug to want to just keep going. It's a very addictive hobby. So now I'll take you from this to my first proper lathe, my starter lathe. And like I said, I was in contact with my, my best friend in Canada backwards and forwards and I was showing him bits and pieces I was making and uh, he could see I was getting frustrated with chucks and things breaking on me and just not being able to hold, hold the pieces properly and do you know I was very very limited of what I was I could do with it I was watching all these guys on YouTube as I said and I was getting frustrated because I, I kind of thought well I can do this but I'm really restricted but I had no cash no spare cash at all um, so he he came up with a suggestion that he would help me out with uh, buying my first lathe. Um, very, very generous offer, and he is a very sincere and genuine guy. And what he did was he went out and he made some bowls himself with his lathe, and um, he sold, um, I think it was a Russian olive bowl, and um, I think a cherry bowl, he said. And he, and he sold them, and the proceeds that he made from those bowls, he sent to me through PayPal as a gift. And with that money, I added just a small bit of savings that I had, and I was able to buy this first lathe. So if it wasn't for, for Rob, I probably wouldn't have 
been able to get properly started with, with wood turning, or it would have delayed my start in wood turning by quite a long time. Uh, so for that I will be ever grateful to him, a, a fantastic guy and a really true friend. Um, so yeah, the lathe that I got was this starter lathe, it, was, it came as a kit. It came with uh, three chisels itself, which were very uh, cheap. Um, I've got one here. Very cheap chisels. They come out the handles and they're very flimsy and, you know, dangerous to use, to be honest with you, and I don't use them. Um, I think all I use them for is doing hand carving and things like that. I, I don't put them near the, the lathe. I, I think I had another one and it just broke off here. So um, I, yeah, I don't use those. But it came with a better set as well as part of the, the kit, uh, which had your normal um, skew chisel, bowl gouge, uh, roughing gouge, parting tool, scraper. I think it was two bowl gouges, two different sizes. And it came just as a, a set in a nice box and it came with this. And the whole package, I think, was about 200 euro. I don't know what that is converted in your country, but uh, around about 200 euro for the whole uh, kit. Now, this is only part of the lathe. It's got this section here as well that bolts onto it. I'll bring it down and show you the lathe. Don't worry, I know you can't see it there. But this section was the extension piece for doing long spindle work as well. So I'll, uh, I'll bring the camera down and I'll show you. Okay, so this is the SIP starter lathe. Uh, it's pretty much what you see there. It came with two tool rests, uh, the smaller one, the spindle broke on it. And uh, this one I actually ground down, because I wasn't using this lathe anymore, I ground down and I use it, used it for my newer lathe again, uh, because I didn't have a big tool rest at the time. But um, it still works in this, I just made an adapter piece out of wood and there's steel through that as well. But um, yeah, it was a... A great lathe for starting with. Um, it's got a half horsepower engine. It's an induction motor, but it, it has a thermal cutout on it, which is really annoying. So, if you do get one of these starter lathes, what you need to do is just cut out underneath the bench and allow air to get in underneath because the motor is in this box in the in underneath. Or what I did was I had a, an electric fan connected to the electrics of this so that when you switched it on it blew air into the, into the uh, motor and kept it cool because you'd use it for a half an hour, it would heat up and it would cut off and you'd have to leave it for another half hour before it would cool down. So it was really annoying. Now that did stop the problem. Now you'd have to be working it really hard for it to cut out then. So that, that did work. It came with the, this large faceplate and it came with this uh, drive center. And it came with this um, live tail center, but I mean, this is, con this is permanently connected to the spindle. You can't change that at all. And there's also no, um, there's also no Morse taper, Morse taper for, for the head. So you, you can't use any adapters. This is pretty much all you could use. Now I had a chuck. Uh, I still use it, it's connected to a bowl here. This was the, the SIP chuck that I, I used. I, I, was only, I was using this chuck right up until uh, last week when I got the new chuck with the new lathe. But that's the, um, the chuck that I use on, that I did use on that lathe and indeed the, the next lathe. Um, yeah, uh, it's got four speeds, um, but it's changed over here. On the on a belt system, so you have to uh, you have to open this door and you have to undo four bolts down at the bottom with the spindles on on the motor, and you have to lift it and you have to change the belts inside. It's not variable speed, um, so that's a bit annoying because you get a piece done. If you were say working on a goblet, you'd get the cup finished and you'd have to sand it. You'd have to go from the high speed that you had it on, you'd have to change the belt over, put it to a low speed, do your sand, and then move it back up to the speed you want to, to turn the rest of the goblet, and then change it again for, for sanding. Very annoying. But as a first lathe, 
absolutely fantastic. I learned so much with this lathe and the first set of tools that I got. It was absolutely fantastic. Uh, so I'll bring you over to the next lathe. Okay, so this is a lathe that uh, you've all seen many, many times. It's the lathe that I started this channel with and it's a really, really nice lathe. I really love this lathe. Um, if you're thinking of wood turning and starting up, this pretty much has everything you need to get started. It will, it will be a great learning tool uh, if you can possibly afford this one. This one I think was uh, 400 euro, 450 euro, something like that. Again, I got it from IE Depot in Galway. Um, I ordered it and it was there the next day. Um, yeah, variable speed. There's a little control knob here on variable sweep speed. Um, it's a three quarter horsepower engine on this one, which is in underneath here. And uh, it goes from 500 revs per, per minute to 3,500 revs per minute. So it's quite a fast machine at the top end. Um, but you can't really slow it down that much on the lower end for sanding. Now 500 is alright for sanding. Um, but it's great for pen turning pens and doing the high speed spindle work and stuff. It's, it's really nice. I did have a problem. The only problem I've had was the on off switch for it. Um, it got sticky and uh, you had to keep hitting the on button for it to start uh, working properly. So I just changed that out. It was very cheap to fix and uh, it's worked perfectly fine since. This has also got a thermal cutout on it. But in the time I've had it and all the work, and I've done some big pieces on this and I've had this running for a lot of hours at a time, it's only ever cut out on me once. And to be honest with you, I didn't blame it. I said, okay, you can have a rest, because I was, I was working it hard. Um, it's a heavy cast iron machine. And this is the one that I will now carry around with me if I do small demos and things locally. I can use this one for my demo, uh, demo model. It has a, an MT1 uh, head and tail stock on it. It came with the uh, drive center and this small, this small face plate. And it comes with this uh, small um, live tail stock. Uh, drive. Um, I've got a, a Jacobson chuck that goes into that which you've all seen me use and uh, it, I, that's just oil on it. I keep everything pretty much oiled. Um, yeah and the, you tighten the tension up just with this lever here on the motor if it starts getting a bit slack but the variable speed is brilliant on this and it's been a fantastic little lathe. It really has. Uh, never had any problems with it. I saved up this the money for this after that, after my starter lathe, um, just a bit at a time, and eventually was able to go out. I think I got some uh, Father's Day gift money or, or present money or something like that, I forget what it was, and I was able to go out and, uh, and buy this one for myself. And that's done me really well. I've really enjoyed using that lathe, and I will continue to enjoy using that lathe for doing the smaller projects. So uh, yeah, we'll move on from my wee lathe to its daddy monster lathe. Okay, and, uh, so we'll to the new SIP Pro lathe. Um, it's a 14, in 14 inch uh, from centre to the top of the bed. So you can do a 14 inch bowl. Um, but it does come with um, an outboard system that you can connect to these cast iron legs that swings out for doing bigger bowls. It has a, um, a revolving headstock, so all this twists and you can do outboard turning. So you can do some big bowls on, on this, which I'm looking forward to try. Now that's the next thing that I will save up and buy is the outboard for this, for this lathe. Um, it's got a one horsepower uh, motor on it. Now this has been called a lot of things, a lot of guys have told me about this switch. This uh, speed switch is the only thing that I've got to get used to and I'll have to get used to it very fast. This is the obviously the safety on off switch uh, that's on the system. But this uh, power handle 
the speed handle, you cannot adjust. I've just set that on, on six just to show you. you. You can't adjust that at all unless it's running. Um, so, now that that's running, I can bring that speed down. So I, I've got to get used to making sure that I put that speed down to, to, to one every time I turn my lathe off with pieces in it because it can be dangerous. If I've, if I've got that up on a high speed, that I've been doing some spindle work and come along and I put a bulb blank on and then switch the machine on, bang, it's gonna, it's gonna throw it at me and it's gonna be dangerous. So that's the only thing that I've got to get used to on this lathe that I'm a bit wary about. My buddy in uh, Canada said that it's uh, Lovejoy pulleys and then Brendan from uh, Bacon Soda, a channel called Bacon Soda, a uh, very nice guy in the north of Ireland here uh, he says it's a Reeves drive or scooter drive, and he did he did give me a few pointers on using it. So thanks for that, Brendan. That's uh, very kind of you. Um, but uh, yeah, I'll get used to it. That's the only the only small downside of this, but that's fine. I, I'll get over. It goes from five hundred RPM to two thousand two hundred RPM on this machine. So again, no real lower range on it, and I would like a reverse, but you can't have anything, have everything. This is still an affordable lathe. It looks like a big, expensive lathe, but as lathes go and the range that's out there, the high-end lathes, you're talking five to 6,000 euro. This was 900 euro, um, all in. That's with the, v, the, the VAT tax and everything. That was 900 euro for what you see here, apart from, obviously, apart from the chuck. It came with, uh, it comes big, heavy steel faceplate, a really good faceplate. It comes with the, uh, the extended outboard for the, for bowl turning. You, like I said, you can get a bigger one for that for doing even bigger bowls, but it comes with that extension. It comes with the small tool rest and the large tool rest. It comes with the two spanners for, uh, for your spindle. Your um, drive center. And then it comes with your um, live tail center that you can replace, there's a grub screw in there, you can replace the end of this, which is great. You can take that out and you can get uh, replaceable centers for that. Uh, now, I will be getting a set for that. Um, it has plastic handles on it for all this kind of stuff. You know, they are plastic. But to be honest with you, I think I'm gonna pimp that and make some wooden ones anyway. Put some wooden handles, this is a metal one. It has your push stick for taking out your, your live and your head. So. Now, it did come packaged in a crate, a good solid wooden uh, coffin crate made out of ply. It was all in one big crate and it was really heavy. Um, and it came with these. And they are a spares for basically the bottom of your banjo and your tail stock here. But what I'm gonna use them for is I'm gonna use them for making myself a steady rest. So they'll go in underneath the bed here and they work perfectly for, for, for making myself a steady rest. There's a bolts and nuts and everything to go with it. So that was really good to get two of those spare with it. Um, I think that's pretty much all right. Oh, the, the headstock on this as well. Um, it, it, um, it slides up and down the bed. So you can, if you're doing, um, if you're doing heavy work, this head can be right in the center so it's balanced. So the whole thing is grounded through, through the center of the legs. They're all lower end budget machines. Do you know, they're not mad expensive. Uh, they're affordable. And like I say, there are other legs out there that are probably much better, but uh, there's something that I'm probably never gonna be able to afford to buy. Do you know, so I'm happy with this and I'll look after this and I'm sure it will uh, look after me.
Well, that's my journey so far when it comes to lathes. And uh, I'll be stopping at this one for a long, long time. Um, I know it's only a short journey. It's only a period of two years that I've been turning. But I've learned so much in those two years thanks to guys on the YouTube and friends and family. Um, YouTube is a fantastic tool. Um, it really is. There are some amazing guys out there that are dedicating their time to show novices and learners like ourselves uh, the road and the safe journey to, to doing this hobby which is just thoroughly enjoyable. It really is an enjoyable hobby and I would urge anybody that's thinking about doing wood turning to go out and and give it a try. Maybe not build your own lathe but you can start very low budget and work your way up. I've proved that here just in a short period and I don't have any spare cash. It's all it's all saved or it's gifted. Um, but if it wasn't for you guys and YouTube and friends, I wouldn't be here. So I, I thank you all for that. Uh, I hope you continue to follow my journey on YouTube. Um, 6,500 subscribers. I, I can't believe that. It's, it's still um, amazing to think that there's so many people that, that watch my, my channel and, and enjoy what I do. And I'm absolutely blown away by uh, all your support, the comments and, uh, and opinions that you, you give me each week. It's all fantastic. So thank you. Uh, that's pretty much it, guys. Um, until the next project, I'll, uh, I'll see you. Bye-bye.